Ten victories, six of them won twos, 15 pole positions. In 1992, Williams Renault struck ten times and won the World Constructors' Championship hands down, beating McLaren Honda, its closest rival, by a total of 438 seconds. Fifteen years of hard work to gain an advantage of little more than seven minutes. The main weapons in the quest for seconds and tenths of a second are the chassis and the monocoque. The Williams team's main area of expertise is to integrate engine, gearbox, cooling systems, fuel tank and driver cell into a package that's light, torsionally rigid and a key asset, aerodynamically efficient. The aerodynamicist's objective is to reduce drag whilst generating as much downforce as possible. 70% of this downforce is generated by the front and rear wings. With a good setup, the Williams Renault will be two or three tenths quicker per lap. During a Grand Prix such as that at Hockenheim, that translates into a gain of around 16 seconds. <laughs> The floor, which regulates the available grip, also contributes towards aerodynamic efficiency. It has a honeycomb construction and several skins to make it as stiff as possible. Baked in a vacuum, the floor, along with the monocoque and chassis, constitutes the car's backbone, one of the Williams Renault's two main assets. The other asset is the engine, the fruit of 15 years' labours, and all made possible by the enormous potential of Renault's research department. Computer-aided design is used at each stage of the engine's development. Once a model has been made, numerous geometric experiments are conducted on the combustion chamber. It's then subjected to wind tunnel testing, and the database built up from these observations enables calculations to be made from which all the engines and ancillaries can be adapted. Optimization of weight and the need for great durability have driven the development of ever more sophisticated composite materials. Such research led to weight savings of 10% in 1992. Theoretically, that's worth three seconds per lap at a circuit such as Monza. In 1993, the combined human and technical resources of Renault and Aerospatiale will be working to save a few hundred grams more and to gain a few more tenths of a second.
In Formula One, as in any extreme environment, state-of-the-art techniques often feed off more traditional skills. The Messier foundry has lent its expertise to Renault Sport and makes the cylinder blocks. Here, well-proven routines have their place in the technology of the future. Cylinders and crankcases are machined at Mikacom, a highly reputed firm in the automotive and aeronautic fields. Precision of numeric checks conditions the quality of the whole engine. The first success of the engine, its ability to steal tenths of a second from its rivals, stems from the total reliability that results from the total compatibility of all its ancillaries. Even when machined to perfection, one piston on its own can't make the difference. The secret is in the balance between piston, valve and cylinder head. Final analysis, though, quality comes into its own in the hands of the engine tuners. The efforts of Renault Sport's 150 technicians are realized when the time comes to assemble the engine. After all the know-how and attention to detail comes the pleasure of perfect harmony, 700 horsepower released at over 14,000 revs per minute. Another advantage is being able to simulate the racing circuits. It's a highly effective way of preparing for a race in order to be in top form from the very first practice session. Well, and lubricants also play their part in the quest for performance. In 1992, ELF developed more than 70 fuels, with the result that the Renault engine's performance improved by 5% during the season. Put another way, that's a benefit of around 6 tenths of a second at a circuit like Magnicourt.
At Williams, the single seater's constituent parts are manufactured, including a gearbox, suspension arms, and exhaust. A team of 200 people works there. It's here that the car is assembled and galvanized by its reactive suspension it comes to life in no time at all. Thanks to this system the Williams Renault can expect to benefit by a whole second around a track such as Estoril. During a Grand Prix a driver will make as many as 3,000 gear changes. With a semi-automatic transmission, they'll save two or three tenths of a second per lap around a circuit like Monaco. The final stage of the car's evolution is the private testing that constitutes the link between the test bed and a Grand Prix. Williams Renault undertakes 25 test sessions every year in every European country and in all weathers. Private testing, as in Grand Prix, telemetry equipment reigns supreme. Developed by Magneti Marelli and governed by Bull computers, it allows the engine to be analyzed at a distance. 
In real time and on every lap, it controls over 30 parameters, including fuel consumption, temperatures, engine speed and pressure. After thousands of hours of effort and ever improving performances, the Williams Renault is able to line up on the grid in a place it'll henceforth make its own, pole position. In 1992, with 10 wins and an advantage of 438 seconds over its closest rival, Renault seized the highly coveted World Constructors' Championship title. Hope you enjoyed that wonderful documentary uh, coming out of England, of course, on the Williams-Renault team.